So recently on the channel, we've looked at a couple of tactics, including uh, one with a libero, another with a ram deuter in the last episode. And you guys seem to really enjoy the more unique tactics uh, that have some sort of success. And this one potentially has the most success that we have seen so far. It also has another position slash role that we don't see very often in the Roman playmaker and I did ask in the last one in the Ram Deuter episode whether there was any other positions that you think may be a little bit more unique and a couple of you did mention the Ram Deuter role it's also a bit weird and asymmetric and I think you're gonna like this one so here is the tactic we are looking at today and I really like it indeed. It's called the Asymmetric Monster version 2. And it is created by a lady called Laura. Who I think is actually quite famous for making tactics alongside the likes of Nap. And the up and comer Ryan Cassidy for sure. Uh, who I think we cannot disregard in, the, in the, the, the speaking of FM tactics. I think these three are around about the best that you can possibly get. And this one, I really like the look of just to begin with. I like isometric tactics. I don't, as much as it looks great when it's all nice and clean and everything's symmetrical, why not chuck in a few random positions? It works in real life. It might work in FM. Now, the tactic is definitely called version 2. So there was a version 1 before the match engine did an update uh, earlier on this year. So I'm uh, looking forward to see what the version 2 has for us but let's take a look into it i have selected two sides today and you'll probably see through the thumbnail a leipzig and a real sociedad save and i'll give you my reasoning for doing just that but before we do go into more of that uh we ha we start off with an advanced forward a really good uh position in the last couple of years of fm this season though it's been quite overlooked with the pressing forward but i'm glad to see it's back uh, on an attacking role, Timo Werner just suits it as well. Very much suited for this roller. Uh, uh, just a pacey, very attack-driven striker. We then have two attacking midfielders on attack in Danny Almo and Forsberg. And this is the reason why this tactic suits uh, Red Bull Leipzig really well. And Sociedad, because they have two very good attacking midfielders. The Roman playmaker in Kevin Campbell, so someone who can actually play the Roman playmaker, definitely helps. Sabitza and Adamola Luckman on the left in winger roles. Uh, this is just, by the way, the the, uh, the assistant manager picking without restriction the best 11. Uh, I haven't changed this at all. Um, but if we have a look, inverted wing backs is next, both on attack on both sides. Two poor playing defenders, both on defence, and a sweeper keeper on support so if we go through that I'll, I'll, so you can have a look at the individual instructions in case you don't download it and you just want to copy it these are what you are looking at today um, but there will be a link down in the description if you wish to just download it or it will take you to the FM Scout website where you can find this database uh, where you can find this tactic sorry um, so it'd be much easier just to do that but I know a lot of you struggle with implementing tactics or you just like to copy it straight from the screen. That's fine. It is on an attacking mentality. In possession then, we have overlapping midfielders. We're attacking fairly wide, playing it out of defence. Slightly more direct with a much higher tempo. Working the ball into the box, which seems to be the norm now across tactics. It seems to work quite well instead of wasting opportunities. Low crosses, running at the defenders, much higher tempo. And then we go over to in transition. It is, of course, a geek and press tactic. Most tactics are distributing the ball to the fullbacks, throwing it long, out of possession, as high as you can possibly get, using the offside trap so it suits pacey centre backs or defenders, using tight and marking, preventing the goalkeeper from making short distribution, and getting stuck in as well. So interesting that we see that one come back, just like we did in the Ram Deuter episode. So like I say, I've picked Leipzig for a good reason. One, the tactic was based around Leipzig, so it's it's good to see that actually in play. And I think I might do that more often in the future instead of picking something random because I've done a lot of tactics where I've tested it from the website and they just haven't been successful. And there's no point in me showing you them. So I'm only really showing you successful tactics. So if you're thinking, well, every single tactic he picks seems to be really good. Obviously, I'm not going to show you the bad ones. Uh, if we do look at season preview, though, we are predicted to finish in sixth place, which I think is rather bizarre. 
how much in Gladbach are above Leipzig by so much. I think Leipzig's team is far superior, really, than much much in Gladbach. But hey, that's by the by. Um, so a sort of higher mid table just outside the European spots for Leipzig. Bundesliga is very contested too. Any team can win it, and I mean that. All the way down to 12th place, outside of Werder Bremen, I seen win the Bundesliga within the first three years on this season of Football Manager. We then look at Real Sociedad then, a team who are roughly around about the same as Leipzig. Uh, they're one of the better mid-table sides in La Liga, but never really pushing for those top spots to get into the big three, I suppose, with Atletico Madrid, uh, Barca and Real Madrid. But this is how their team suits it, and I think their team suits the tactic rather well as well. And they have two very good attacking midfielders on attack, with a Yazabal who, quite frankly, is such an underrated player on this game. He can play. I mean, he's what is he not good at? He doesn't actually have anything under 11. Anything. So, Mikel Yazabal at 22... Don't fall asleep on this man. He's very good. Uh, but you also have Martin Odegaard, or Erdegaard, of course. He was a wonder kid a few years ago. Still quite regarded as a wonder kid, I suppose, at 20 years old, uh, on loan from Real Madrid. So they have two very good attacking midfielders and someone who can play the Roman playmaker role in Miguel Mikel Marino, who, who uh, used to play for Newcastle. Uh, all you Premier League facts but I'm quite interested to see how Real Sociedad do just a team that I've picked up random uh, if we do have a look at La Liga and where they are predicted to finish 7th place so, so I think that's exactly the same as Red Bull Leipzig but of course they have much stronger teams in front of them who are more likely to dominate the league uh, and I think it's harder to, to overcome the likes of Sevilla, Valencia and so on and so forth. So without further ado, I'm going to skip forward one year into the future simply by going on holiday, no tricks or trips, uh, no other players signing and we're going to see exactly how they get on. Of course, I know you're all going to ask as well, the skin is called OPZ Elite. You can find it on the FM Scout website, face packs and everything. I cannot give you because simply I've got them from previous years. Well, 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 we're at the 1st of June 2020 and look how Leipzig have done. That is phenomenal. They've only gone and won the bloody league. 75 points. They've won it by nine points. And remember what I said about anyone from the top seven or wherever it was or top 11 teams I've seen go on and win it. Look at the top four in the Bundesliga this season. Cologne, Mainz, Hoffenheim, Leipzig. No one would ever have suggested that. Bayern Munich finishing 7th place. Dortmund, 10th. So that just goes to show Hertha Berlin got relegated on 17 points. They only won two games the whole season. Kleitz FM will be fuming. Anyway, besides the point, Leipzig have go only gone and done it and won the league. They With a phenomenal amount as well. I mean, you can see the games that they are drawing here. Mainz, Eintracht Frankfurt and Munch and Gladbach teams around the top. They lost 7 and they didn't lose to anyone drastically. Maybe Fortuna Dusseldorf is quite questionable there, down in 15th place. But although uh, Dortmund finished in 10th, still losing to Dortmund isn't too bad. So some really good performances there. Let's have a look at the profile then. And Timo Werner has scored some goals. He has indeed, viewers. 28 goals for Timo Werner. Phenomenal amount. 17 is the next. So he scored 11 goals more than the, the than second in the league. Average rating was completely dominated by Red Bull Leipzig players. And even in 6th place, 8th place, 9th place, 12th. I mean, we probably could get our first 11 in this if we were, uh, if we went down to 25. But still, as you can see, high 7s. 7.57 there, 7.45 for Kevin Campbell in the Roman playmaker role. So we talked about this. The Roman playmaker role, we'll have a look at it and see exactly how Marino and Kevin Campbell do. Um, put a little bit of a spotlight on that position while we're going at it. But Danny Olmo doing phenomenal stuff. Danny Olmo is one of my favourite players in the last couple of um, football manager games. I can't wait to see what this guy develops like in real life. Sort of on par for me with Erling Haaland after sort of like having, enjoying him across a few different football manager saves. So it's nice to see that. Um, where else can we look? Assist-wise, I'm quite surprised. 
Well, there they are. Danny Elmo and Kevin Campbell on 11 assists each in the league. So Kevin Campbell, phenomenal stuff from the Roman playmaker there. Uh, Klosterman down the bottom there with seven. So not too bad then. I'm quite surprised that we didn't see um, the other attacking midfielder. Who was it? I can't remember who it was now. Who for, for Leipzig up there. But they're doing really well. If we have a look more into the stats then. The most goals scored by 30. 30 more goals than anyone else. Red Bull Leipzig. I mean, it's not really surprising because of how much Timo Werner managed to score by himself. But still, in 34 games, that's averaging above two goals a game. For Leipzig there. So that is absolutely outstanding. They didn't even have the best shooting accuracy. So it just goes to show how many shots they had. 355 shots in total. That's amazing. So um, most clean sheets. They managed to keep the most clean sheets as well by a couple. Best average possession. They weren't up there. So that just goes to show it's a very counter-attacking um, formation that we have on our hands here. But if we have a look in total then, Timo Werner with 40 goals, Danny Olmo with 11, Sabitza with 10. Assist-wise, 16 for Emil Forsberg, so that's who was playing in the other role. He managed to get 16 assists, but he only got 6 in the Bundesliga. He spread them out across the Cup, uh, the Champions League, and the non-competitive games, which obviously don't necessarily count towards his, his actual total. But what we will look at is other competitions, because of course they are in the Champions League, and, of course, the German Cup as well. Kevin Campbell with 13 assists. So a fantastic season for him too. Average rates in Timo Werner, Kevin Campbell, Yusuf Poulsen, who we're not really going to count. Only nine games in total. Um, Upa Meccano was up there. Danny Olmo, of course. And as you can see, even down there with seven goals and 16 assists this season, Emil Forsberg is up there too. So, I mean, valuations of these players have skyrocketed thanks to how successful their season was. Which maybe suggests that they've done really well in Europe because 72 million for Timo Werner, Sabitzer 64 million, Forsberg 56. That is, that's a lot. Tactically, then we can see because this position only has one set midfielder, Kevin Campbell played 41 games in total in that position at a 7.4 rating. So he's not necessarily, I don't think, the best player. Um, I mean, I've seen a lot better centre midfielders. He is obviously decent enough for any top league side. But in that Roman playmaker role, it just seems to be something different about it. And I'm quite interested to see. I mean, let's let, while we're here, we still need to have, actually have a look at that, uh, how they did in other competitions. The Roman playmaker is a heartbeat of the team. If you have a really good Roman playmaker, then maybe this will be even better. I mean, Kevin Campbell is not exactly the best centre midfielder on the planet. But he seems to work really well in this formation with this player role. Uh, always offers a pass and option to teammates. So good mental attributes, I suggest, be very good for the Roman playmaker. Must have the physical attributes to maintain a high intensity. So good stamina, good natural fitness. Uh, and he will look to pick up the ball in deep positions and work the ball forwards with urgency. All while keeping the ball uh, in, uh, all while keeping up with play. So the Roman play will, playmaker will often camp on the edge of the penalty area looking for room to shoot or try that killer ball which creates goal-scoring opportunities. So by the looks of it, Kevin Campbell has definitely done that. So phenomenal stuff. Right, how have we done in other competitions then? Uh, knocked out the quarterfinals by Chelsea in the Champions League. That's, an, that's frustrating. Winner of the German Cup. We only have a double on our hands here, boys. And girls, a double. Leipzig have gone and won the domestic double. Fantastic stuff there. That is brilliant. So, well done. Now, let's see how Real Sociedad have done. Have they kept up with Red Bull Leipzig? Well, here we are. Real Sociedad have arguably done a bit more of an overachievement than what Leipzig have done. Because we are finding ourselves in third place, just four points behind... Real Madrid and Barcelona, four points. How have they managed to do that? So with this tactic, they have only lost seven games and they haven't even lost... Well, they lost one against Barcelona, two against Real Madrid and they've drawn against Barcelona as well. So against the two teams above them, they haven't won any games. But some teams around them there, looks like has been the culprits of a few uh, batterings. 5-0 we can see. 3-1 uh, against Atletico Madrid, 2-0 against Valencia, 
Sevilla, Celta Vigo, some big games in there. They've done really well. Stats-wise then, I mean, actually, we'll have a look at profile first. Wow, Willian Jose on 26 goals. Aryazabal. Aryazabal's up there with 22 goals. So that is phenomenal stuff. In a league with Lionel Messi, Lionel Messi finished in fourth to the top goal scorers. And Willian Jose and Aryazabal finishes above him. So that is... That's fantastic stuff. Even Odegaard's uh, down the bottom. Um, right, fair enough. Average rating. No shock to see that Lionel Messi is up on that one. He can't be beat out twice. But a couple of Real Madrid and Barcelona players. And then it is the Real Sociedad men coming through. Even Adnan Yanazai getting in on the uh, on the average rating there. Because he had 13 assists. So Lionel Messi actually turned assist there with 15 assists. Adnan Yanazai on 13. Do we have any other players there? Porto and Odegaard as well. Uh, a lot of yellow cards I can see. Player of the match, Willian Jose in behind Lionel Messi. Uh, let's have a look at the stats-wise then. Most goals in a league with Real Madrid and Barcelona. Real Sociedad have scored the most goals with 89 across the season in 38 games. That is is absolutely outstanding. The average rating of goals per game is phenomenal. Um, best crossing completion, for some reason, is randomly Real Sociedad as well. At least conceded were down in seventh place. Most clean sheets, nowhere to be seen. So they haven't done exactly what um, Rebel Leipzig have managed to do in keeping enough clean sheets. But still, they've done rather well. Possession-wise, not so much. Uh, let's have a look at the actual squad itself. Goals-wise, 37 in total for Willian Jose. Oyarzabal, 26 goals for an attacking midfielder with 8 assists. Assist-wise, we have 18 for Adnan Yanisai. So it's quite interesting to see that in this formation, uh, the assists are coming from different positions on the pitch. So that's quite nice because it just goes to show that um, when you're setting out this tactic yourself, if you do choose to use this tactic then you don't necessarily have to focus on having good attacking midfielders or good wingers. You can have one of the two um, and it still work out for you. But I think you'll agree. I mean, a lot of average rating there above seven for the first team. So that's phenomenal stuff in this very difficult league. And look again, the valuation of these players, Willian Jose is a £56 million player now which we definitely did not see at the start of the season happening. I mean, he's a good striker. He's not an amazing striker. So for that, unbelievable stuff. And Yazabal, I mean, he is going to be the hottest ticket in town to sign this man for sure. An unbelievable player. Now, we did see that Mikel Moreno was playing in that Roman playmaker role. It looks like he's had a quieter year of just one goal, three assists. So did he play in that? He did. Well, actually, no. 20 games he played in that position. So I'm wondering, they've got Ilya Amendi as well. Did Ilya Remendi play in that role instead? He did. So what did he do? 33 games. He didn't get any assists or goals. So the Roman playmaker role does look like it's fluctuated between being good and bad in different leagues. Because this man hasn't done anything for his team. Um, in a team which has actually done phenomenal stuff. Competition-wise then. Uh, outside of La Liga, they were knocked down the fifth round of, by Sevilla, so they haven't done anything in the cup. We couldn't get uh, any cup wins for Real Sociedad. But I think you'll definitely agree that this tactic has worked absolute wonders for both sides, both over overperforming, gaining the domestic double with Red Bull Leipzig and finishing in third place in a league with Atletico Madrid, Barcelona and Real Madrid and almost winning the league by four points i mean at one point okay we'll, we'll do this because i'm actually quite intrigued now at one point were they up there were they up there they were second for so long that is i mean for, they were, for a time being they were first they were actually first hold on so did on the very last game of the season match 38 were they sitting top at one point they, cut, they couldn't have been. Unless they have won the last game, unless they lost the last game, they did. So at one point, Real Sociedad were in for winning the league. 
So there we have it guys, another successful tactic tested, a really good one. I'm really enjoying these tactic tests and I hope you are too. Let me know down in the comments your thoughts on this tactic, whether you're going to use it. Of course, the link to it is down in the description. It will take you to the FM Scout website. Drop a like on the video if you can, that would be fantastic. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And if you're looking for some Let's Play action, the link to my channel is also down there too. Please come across and say hello. Drop me a sub, that would be fantastic. Or there is a link at the end of the video to my channel and one of my videos. So that would be absolutely fantastic if you can come across and say hello. But my name is Megaluke. This is the FM Scout YouTube channel. I'll see you for the next one, guys. Bye-bye.